Hello and welcome to the Korea Bay Knitting Podcast. Hello, welcome. My name is Rebecca. I'm a knitter and knitwear designer based in Edinburgh and this is a vlog or a podcast all about knitting. What I'm currently knitting on, what I've been knitting on and what I'd like to cast on in the not too distant future. It feels like it's been forever since I last filmed. I'm just realising I've forgotten a project. I'll get it in a minute. Um, it feels like it's been forever since I last filmed and it has been a while. Um, but it's been a funny, funny couple of weeks. So I've got some stuff to show you, but a lot of the things I showed last time I have zero progress on and then I also have some new cast-ons. <laughs> so a bit, a bit chaotic today. Um, I'm going to make an attempt at speaking a bit slower. I get the request all the time and on the one hand I want this to be natural and be easy and just feel like I'm just sitting down and having a chat. On the other hand, I think the episode a few weeks ago was extreme fast talking. <laughs> so we're just gonna pull it back a little bit today um, and try to land somewhere in the middle of it still feels comfortable and natural and easy but um, people can also understand what I'm saying. You know, the basics. So I have two finished objects today. I have one, two, three, four, five, if I go grab the one I've forgotten, five works in progress and no yarn acquisitions but I do have a little update talk about it. Do you remember to talk about that? Actually, let me just talk about it first. The Woolly Good Gathering, which is a new Edinburgh-based festival, has tickets on sale today. So today is Friday the 3rd, 16th of February. Um, <clears throat> they had a Kickstarter a while back. I supported their Kickstarter. and um, So I already have my tickets. It is a Friday and Saturday at the end of April and like I'm not, I'm not affiliated or anything, but I'm just really excited. Uh, it's been a while since Edinburgh had a festival. I have not, <clears throat> sorry, there used to be a huge festival in Edinburgh called Edinburgh Yarn Festival or EYF and it got like really big, like Rhinebeck big I think. Not in terms of the space but in terms of the hype. I think a lot of people travelled from far away and yeah it was really big and it has, it's no longer a thing. Um, and we have some other festivals in, in Scotland but I don't know, Edinburgh is such a nice city and it's so easy for me to get to. <laughs> and I think that starting from scratch they're trying to do some really cool things and trying to it's going to be a festival but there are also going to be like fun things in the evenings and I don't know I'm kind of like I've never in my life gone to a gala after a knitting festival I don't have any desire to I don't know if that's a thing anywhere else but festivals have like gala dinner and like I'm not going to I'm like a hardcore very committed knitter <laughs> who will attend all the things but I'm not going to a gala so it's nice that they're doing like food trucks and they're gonna have music and yeah, I'm excited. So not affiliated, but just want to promo it in case anyone is interested. Edinburgh is also a really nice city and April is a good time to come. I cannot guarantee the weather, but it's not like, it's not super touristy. It should be a nice time. So if you're planning a city break, <laughs> a great time to come would be the last weekend in April. I'll put their website uh, down below in case anyone wants to have a look at tickets. And yeah, I'm already planning what I'm gonna wear. I've not knit it yet, but I will be knitting it. Um, it's actually right, this yarn, I think I'm going to use this Jameson and Smith yarn. I'm not sure if I'm going to get a gauge. I need to do a gauge watch soon because I have a, a pattern to knit up. Anyway, <laughs> that was a bit tangential. Um, let me jump into my first finished object, which is my, <coughs> sorry, my throat. Like, it feels like there's something in there, but it's not really moving. This is my technically toaster, um, which is a toaster t-shirt with sleeves. Um, I wasn't really, it wasn't like, oh, I'm gonna go make a toaster. It was more, I get a gauge swatch, I hit gauge for a toaster t-shirt. I wanted a basic sweater. So I just cast on from there and just kept going. It is knit up in, do I have the yarn here? Did I not put it away? I'll be very surprised if I put it away. I have one of the yarns, I have two of the yarns. Okay, so this is Cascade 220 in the color Orchid. And this is um, Mayo Garn, but I really, very clean and tidy. Mayo Garn Pearl Mohair in the colour Mauve. First time using this, really liked it. Um, it's not like a super, like it doesn't feel super silky or anything, but I had no issues with it. And their colours are really, really nice. They have a lot of really bright, very saturated colours. I will use this again. Um, I think they have a blue that I'm interested in and they have a, like a 
proper like cherry, like a, like a tomato red that I like. Um, so would get this. I ordered from them directly to the UK. They are based in France, I believe, and it was absolutely fine. But I know that they're also stocked by My Ivory Room, who I've never ordered from, but I know that they stock them. Um, they have a matching fingering weight. Is it a sport weight? Well, it's like, yeah, it's like 350 meters per 100 grams. So is that sport or like a light finger, heavy fingering? Um, that goes, that matches their mohair really well. And I'd love to try that at some point. But I just use Cascade, which I ordered with the intention of making a cardigan and then it came and it was not the color I was hoping for, but the outcome I love. <laughs> so I held these together. I have, um, the tool set is a 17 stitch gauge, which makes sense for like this worsted weight. Yeah, it's pretty much a worsted, it's even like our, actually it's more like an iron weight sweater. Um, the cascade is 200 meters per 100 grams, which is like, that's pretty much a worsted to iron anyway. And then I added some more here. And yeah, I really like it. There's not much to say. It's a pretty basic raglan. It's a little wide on the neck. I resisted the temptation to put a double neckband on, which is my go-to. Because I see that like fashionably, we're wearing sweaters with like a peak of a t-shirt underneath it. It's a thing that's happening. I hate it. <laughs> uh, like a peak of a white t-shirt and a pair of jeans. It looks so good. I'm not sure if it's for me, but we're trying it out. But honestly, I'm wearing like a, like a grey t-shirt right now. Worst case, I'll just wear a camisole underneath. But we're trying to lean into like sh like not just having a really high neck and a folded neckband, which is my go-to every single time. We're going for versatility. And yeah, there is, in my personal opinion, a bit too much fabric up here. And it wouldn't surprise me if I've actually not measured gauge after I blocked it. And I think potentially we've got a bit more room here than I would like. Um, I don't mind it. Like it's not the end of the world to me. It's a raglan. Raglans tend to have to often have this fold, especially if it's an oversized raglan. But yeah, it just feels like there's a bit too much here. I don't mind. I think it's a gauge issue. I mean, I'm positive it's a gauge issue. I know it's a gauge issue. <laughs> it's not going to stop me wearing it. And I love this colour. It's kind of getting blown out. It's a little bit more... It's a very, like, pink purple, which is ridiculous to say pink purple, but it, it really is, like, a very bright colour. Almost neon, to be honest. But I like it. It's a bit different. And I think it goes quite well with my hair, like, my skin tone. And I'm trying to lean into some brighter colours this year, with so far relatively good success. Like I think it's going pretty well. So I'm glad it's done, it's super cosy. It's my, I actually, this is how I know the gauge changed, is that my sleeves were definitely like here pre-block. <laughs> and now they're like, I didn't stretch them at all and now they've gone out. So I definitely think there's been some changes with the gauge, which honestly, I, it's my own fault. I should have locked, like swatched a block, but I don't really, for a raglan, I was just like, eh. I'm pretty sure I even just cast on and then, knit an inch and then measured it. So like, it had a very, very irresponsible gauge to watch. So yeah, that is my first finished object. It's actually the first time I've worn it. <clears throat> Sorry, I don't know what's going on with my throat today. Um, it's quite, it's quite heavy and it's actually just taken like a warm turn this week here. It's now like 10 degrees, 10, 12 degrees this weekend. So not really mohair sweater, chunky weight, weather but it won't stop me I'll just sweat through it <laughs> my second finished object is this uh, beanie it is the weekend <laughs> last episode I was calling this the weekend hue beanie and I realized it's because the file name of the pattern is weekend hue and I think it must be is she Danish or Norwegian I think she's Danish it must be it must be the word for hat in the native language of petite knit <laughs> It's not called the weekend hue hat, it's just called the weekend hat. So yeah, but it's silly of me. Um, I'm not crazy about it. I don't mind it. I don't really have very many knitted hats. I now have two. Well, I technically have three. I don't have the perfect hat. I don't own it. And do you know what's really annoying? I made the perfect hat for Christmas and I gave it away to somebody. And it was bright orange, so that wasn't the perfect, but the fit was perfect. And I'm appreciated and I didn't take notes. So I'm annoyed. But anyway, for some reason, my ribbing is just not staying straight at all. Um, I blocked it and like, I had to really adjust it to make sure the ribbing lines up. Cause when I automatically put it on, this ribbing goes this way and this goes this way. And my decreases are not particularly neat because I switched between combination and co continental knitting. And you can tell, you can actually see it. Even with blocking, you can see the line where I switched. Um, and yeah, like, uh, you can't, it's not enough to tell. It's got these like cool 
the creases, but I don't know, it's not really messy. And this yarn is Sunday, double Sunday from Sandy's Garm. And it just feels a bit plasticky to me. I'm not a huge fan. I know people love this. I know um, Jo, who is made by Jo Designs on Instagram and also has a podcast, knit up my coring cardigan in the pictures in this yarn and loves it and like wears it a lot. She does say it pills a lot. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just think like, I know this is also like Knitter's fault, but like those are not very neat decreases. And I find things like that always block out. I never, I'm not a very neat knitter. But my issues never last beyond blocking. Um, so maybe I'm asking too much of the yarn to expect that to go away. But yeah, not not crazy about it. I'm sure there's a definitely a way to make my, my decreases neater. So that's probably also the answer. Um, but yeah, I'm just, even just, I don't know, like, I don't think it looks very neat. So yeah, we have it. The goal was to have it in time for rugby season. Uh, I have it in time for rugby season, so you know, we, we hit the goal, but I do think at some point I'll cast another hat and have another go. I'd like to have another go at making either an Oslo, which I know is big, so I have to size down, or another Muscle Borough. Um, but I've not done that yet. We'll do it at some point, I guess. I always have other stock in it projects I care about more, and a hat, like, I have to justify a hat, because I could just knit half a garment, <laughs> so why knit a hat? So... Those are my works in, no, those are my finished objects. I can start with some of my works in progress, but I do need to go and grab one because I did forget one. In fact, let me grab that now. Okay, I have the project. I, um, <laughs> I don't think I've worn the sweater yet um, much at all. So Sam's not seen it. And he's, and he's like, oh, you look like a plum. <laughs> and then he said, no, more like a damson. It's too, too pale to be a plum. So there we go. This is my... My ja damson sweater. Uh, okay, so I have a handful of works in progress. Three of them are pretty much brand new and everything else I've worked on last time I've not touched. So this one I think I did show last time. Um, so my Lauder sweater vest cardigan mega pattern is an all over cabled pattern with like loads of options. So it's all gonna be in one pattern document. But in that document there's a round neck and a v-neck option and a cardigan and a vest and a sweater so for the cardigan the sweater and the vest there is a v-neck or a v-neck and a round neck so technically there are technically six patterns in the one but also I think there are a few testers who are going to do the button bands on the v-neck like ma mash together the cardigan and the vest to make a button up vest which I've not included in the instructions but would be very easy to do. So theoretically, I guess that means there are eight options, which is quite a lot, which means of course I need lots of samples. <laughs> so I already made a sweater and a vest, and I love them both, and I wanted another sweater, um, and I also want another sweater again. So one of my sweaters has had a lot of work. I think last time I'd maybe just on the back. I've, I've come a long way. So here's where we're at. Um, cables just don't look good until they get blocked. <laughs> in my humble opinion. Um, but like a grey cable knit sweater, living my academia dreams. I'm using, I completely like glossed over this yarn last time, I am using Sheepsoft DK, which is a yarn from Laxton's. Laxton's primarily spin yarn for hand dyers and the BFL base that everyone raves about is Laxton. So I think it's the Sonder yarn base um, it's the British DK from Le Garçon, it's a lot of the times Ginger Twist, my, my local yarn shop, has a, they're called Mash and Mayhem, it's the BFL Mash and Base and it's 75% BFL, 25% Masham. It's beautiful, it's what I made my alders in, like I really like the base, it holds shape really well, it's soft, it's like rustic but not itchy and so I ordered straight from them and I will say it's a different spin. I think it's closer to the British yarn base by Le Garçon, but I've only seen it very, very briefly at, at Rhinebeck. But in my opinion, like the Sonder is, you can see the plies on Sonder, whereas this one, and I think the British base from Le Garçon is a much rounder base. So, and you can't get the ply, the one that looks like plies, I can't get that directly from Laxton's, that has to come, like I've only seen that dyed up by hand dyers. 
So when I found out that Laxins were selling directly, I ordered from them. <laughs> they have, I think, two. I think they have Sheep Soft and Wool Trace. Sheep Soft is the BFL and Wool Trace is the, like, a kind of random selection of, like, a variety of wools. And I did order that one as well. But I didn't, interestingly, I ordered that one, I think, to make my very first sample of this. And I didn't love it. The colour was, it's like a muddy green and I don't dislike it, but it didn't sell me on it for that one. Is that what that was? Yeah, I think it must have been. Jeez, that feels like, I took it with us when we went to Aaron and that feels like that was years ago. It was not, it was like four months ago. But in my head, I've not been working on this pattern that long, but I guess I have. So I have this grey base. And I did swatch for it by itself and I think it would gauge, I think it would be absolutely fine. The yardage is 220 meters, which is the same as Daisy, which is what I used for my first sample. So it would be completely fine by itself. I added mohair. I had mohair and I thought, why not? So I'm using Tilia by, no, I'm using Tin Silk Mohair from Sanit's Garden, which I like because it's got wool in it as well, 50% wool. Um, so it still feels quite rustic. Um, I had this leftover from a project and I just had to order like one more skein so I just did that because I thought why not so it's looking pretty good I sized up so my original sample has like zero E's I think on my sweater and there are quite big jumps between the sizes so I want to try and show a sample with like minimal ease and more ease so that people can make a more informed decision on what kind of ease they want for their sweater and this is where I'm at and I really like it. It needs a collar at some point soon. I think I'm gonna go chunkier on the collar than my first sample. Um, it's quite an open neck on the first one, which I am happy with. And I think a lot of the time I make a chunky collar and people prefer to not have a chunky collar. So I think it's good to show, like to have one that's the other way around. Cause you can always modify it, right? Like if you don't love a chunky collar with a folded neckband, you can just knit a single rib and cast off. <laughs> like that's a preference thing. Just like, um, if you have like a, like a narrower neckband or it's only single fold, you can just, depending on the construction, you can just pick it up, knit twice as long and fold over. So I think um, I will make this one chunkier. And I'm just plotting around the body now. I've done maybe, what is that, like eight centimetres? Maybe, maybe not even that much. Seven, under the arms. And I'm just plodding along. It smells, it smells really good. It smells super sheepy. Um, it is definitely, I mean, mohair softens cables, but I'm not mad about that. Um, and you can still see like the, yeah, the back is like my favorite part because you can see this cable here. So I like it a lot. I would like to take this, I think, on our New Zealand Australia trip. I think this would be a very like, versatile, we're doing a lot of outdoorsy stuff and I feel like this would be a good sweater that would just go with everything that I could just chuck on. Um, like a very versatile cable sweater, but maybe not. So, that is my progress with this one. I had no intention to make the v-neck. I might, I may have a sample net up in the v-neck sweater. Oh, it's in my Strickefeber bag. I love this bag, it's beautiful. It's, um, I bought this myself. It's from this company called Strickefeber. It's Norwegian, I believe. This is their regular. This is the large, the large is huge. Like, comfortably fits, I think like, nine skeins of cascades like if it comes to a kilo of yarn easy um but this one is perfect size it's really nice um oh yeah so the v-neck i think i want one i didn't think i did i'm not a huge v-neck person I've, I've struggled with v-neck sweaters i've knit two of them is that right yeah i've knit two of them and i've given them both away so that's a sign of my thoughts around v-neck sweaters but I knit my vest and it's a v-neck and I love it. So I need to have a bit of a think as to whether or not I would also love a v-neck sweater. We will see. And I think I want to use a sheep soft in the natural base, if I do, just like a cream natural base. Um, I'm not that crazy about it, but then I keep seeing the v people tag, the, the testers tag me in them and I want it. So that is what this is. I've not actually made any progress on my cardigan. I don't think since last time. I think I'd already bound the body off last time. I'm pretty sure I had. Um, I need to pick up sleeves and I've just not done it. My goal is to get the sleeves started this weekend. This one is in Drops Daisy. And this is the v-neck shaping. Um, like all the, there's like a edge cable. You can't really see it blows out a lot in this yellow color. And so all the cables like grow inside this v-neck 
this cable and this cable runs like all the way down. Um, and I love it. And I keep seeing it in the sweaters and I just think, oh, I want one, I really want one. So yeah, we'll see. I definitely would have that one sample knit, I think, because I will have knit for all of our cable knit garments and I've got other stuff I need to be working on and not making a fifth all of our cable knit gar gar uh, garment. I was torn between whether I should take this one, the red cardigan or just the sweater to keep working on, but I've decided that if I keep working on the body of this, I'm going to end up on sleeve island, cable knit sleeve island times four and that feels like a lot of sleep, a lot of cables <laughs> all at once. So I'm going to try and get the cardigan finished off um, and then I, yeah, maybe I can get it done in, like by the end of the week, like next week and then I can focus again on this one and then I'm pretty close to having them all done, which is kind of nice. I quite like all of our cables, but it's just a lot of work. It doesn't go very quickly. It's nice to see progress. Okay, we have pretty much three almost completely brand new projects. I think I'd maybe started this one last time, but I don't think I'd made a lot of progress. So let me talk about that now. So this is a cardigan I'm working on. Uh, it will be, I think it's a March release I have a plan for and it's gonna have a short sleeve version and a long sleeve version and this is my first sample in short sleeves. I am yet again using Cascade 220. I love this yard. <laughs> I am not even re remotely sponsored but if they ever asked if I wanted to be I would say yes because I buy a lot of their yarn. I think it's such a good, it's well priced. It's about, I think it's maybe eight pounds for a hundred grams and a lot of my garments or like whatever I knit would maybe use like five or six of them which means you're talking like 50 pounds for a full sweater, which honestly, I mean, unless you pair it with mohair, it's, it's well priced and it's really high quality. I've never had, I wear it a lot and I've never had issues. It pills because it's quite soft, but it doesn't pill so much that you feel like you're always having to depill it. And when you do depill it, it goes back to normal really well. So I love this yarn. I'm using the, I think it might be called Arctic White and I don't know how I feel about it. <laughs> Um, I'm warming to it more than I thought I would. Here's the thing, I wanted a white lace cardigan. Um, my go-to would be to use like a marzipan or an off-white. However, a couple of things. One, I have a short-sleeved lace cardigan, my, my uh, Corin cardigan from last year. And two, I think with my colouring, again, I'm trying to lean more into colours that I feel like I look good in. Um, I think a bright white is better and I think a, like a marzipan washes me out because it's too close to my skin tone. Whereas with this, like I'm very, like I'm pale, but I'm not that pale. So um, I think it's good. The reason I don't love it is it feels, it doesn't feel any different, but it looks bleached. And it is bleached because obviously the natural, this is not the natural colour of wool. And that feels a bit weird. And dyeing doesn't bother me, but the bleaching part feels weird a little bit. So that being said, I am enjoying it. I've had a few, I'm just about to come, that's only my second cake and I've not even finished the first one yet and we've made a lot of progress. So I was planning, I'm realizing right this second that my intention was to steam block this before I showed it and I did not do that. <laughs> um, but this is the progress that I have made. It looks pathetic. Um, it is a bottom up cardigan with all over lace and I, I did steam block the bottom motif but I've not seen what the top motif. So you can kind of see this is the first one and this is the second one. The little garter bumps in the middle. This one looks really not very good. Um, I had this watch. Is this a swatch? This is the stitch pattern. No it's not. I'm lying. <laughs> uh, is this it? No. Okay I take it back. I don't know where the stitch pattern is. The swatch is. Is this it? Okay. I've misplaced the swatch. <laughs> oh no, a big one. This is what the top stitch pattern will look like when it is blocked out. This is the bottom one. And yeah, currently it looks like this, which yeah, you can't really tell. Lace is such a, such a dangerous beast because she changes her mind. And it's a bit like cables, you know, like the blocking changes it so much. So yeah, um, I've not done a whole lot of knitting, but we're, we're pretty far on this. I need to finish this motif. Um, I cannot remember what row I'm on. I should have made a note of that. And then I need to, at some point, relatively soon, split for sleeves. I actually have to measure my Corin 
before uh, we leave today. We're going to a dog set this weekend and I need to measure my cord to make sure it fits the same way. It's got the same length as that one because I like the length of that a lot. And yeah, I am not uh, I'm not the most proficient lace knitter. I find lace knitting, I actually, sometimes I find it really easy and sometimes I find it quite challenging. This bottom repeat doesn't change, like it's always eight stitches and it always goes up and down eight stitches. This top one is also eight stitches but it goes like out and back, if that makes sense. And so with the ones that are fixed, I just put a locking stitch marker in between every single repeat. And then if I get to the end of the repeat and I've messed a yarn over or I've done something wrong, I can very easily see where there aren't enough stitches. But when that pattern shifts, it's harder to keep track of. And um, so I have had to do a good amount of ripping out. <laughs> Due to my own incompetence and nothing else. So I will hopefully get started writing this up this weekend. Um, I'm actually really, really pleased seeing this on camera, both with the white choice and with the lace choices. There were a lot of decisions to be made here and that was stressing me out a little bit and this is looking exactly how I wanted it to look which is really cool. So yeah, I, I changed my mind. Uh, I was planning to do the bottom half all one lace and the top half a different lace and I have decided instead to do these bands. So one here, one here, it's going to go back to that first lace next. Wasn't the plan but I'm glad I've decided that. So yeah, um, I'd like to get the body finished this week. It's Friday, let's see. It, the, the problem is, is that I've been doing a lot of reading and like this is not reading and knitting. This is like, I can have something on in the background, but like I have to not care about it. It has to be background TV or like background watching because I need to focus on this. So it can definitely be challenging. Um, but it's moving quickly. And my plan was to get this to testing. I think I have it scheduled for the, the first week of March to go to testing and I like to give my tech editor like, 10 days <laughs> and it's currently the 16th of February so ideally it's short sleeve this one which is fine I need to work out what I'm doing about the long sleeves I need to work out my, my lace de decrease pattern I love and hate this I uh, I have quite a few interesting decreases on some of my sweaters the Lanark which is half fisherman's rib has really nice decreases the Alder I am so proud of those decreases they are they are chef's kiss they are so seamless and the Corrin also has really cool decreases. Um, and I need to work out what the decreases are gonna look for this. So I like them to not be too clunky and quite easy to follow, but I really like them when they're seamless and when you can't tell they're there. And this is a, usually I would do that by pulling out a whole repeat at a time and working out how to get that stitch pattern out. So for Corrin, you take out four stitches at once. Three stitches at once? I don't know, I can't remember. But you take out a full repeat. And for all there, you take out a full repeat as well. But this has eight stitches, and eight stitches is too many to take out at once in a big gauge. So I have to work out a way to do that at some point. Um, yeah, and I'm also now, as I'm saying this, thinking that not every size, I'm pretty sure the gauge is like up at the 16 stitches. I don't want to have five cent and the, the, the stitch pattern is eight, stitch, stitch, eight stitches, which means that one repeat is approximately five centimetres. I don't want to have five centimetres between every single size of sleeve because that is not, that doesn't, that's not great. <laughs> Most sizes are only like maybe one or a couple of centimetres between each size. So I'm going to have some partial stitch repeats under the arc. So I want to make sure I can continue my partial stitch repeat. So that's fine. Anyway insight into my brain for a little minute there into how that works. Um, this is one of the reasons I love designing bottom up. I think it results in a really lovely fit, um, especially for cardigans. I love it. It means I like to stop it early and then you work the left and the right shoulder separately and I just think it gives it such a nice fit over the shoulders. Um, so it is one of my preferences but also from a designing perspective it gives me some breathing room to get going and to get a feel for how things are working and for it like, to come together so that by the time I get to things like the underarms and the sleeves, like I've had, like, my brain has sort of chewed over it a little bit. Um, yeah, so that is the, I think it's gonna be called Sana, S-A-N-N-A. -N -N -A. Uh, it's also a beach in Scotland. Tolsta is a beach, which was one of my summer patterns last year and this is also a beach. So um, yeah, it's called Sana. And my long sleeve version, 
it's either gonna be in hot pink or in navy. <laughs> like bubblegum pink. I do have a, I have some yarn. In here, maybe, yeah, I do. I have some Cascade in the yarn I'd probably choose, which is this. Um, oh, maybe it's not quite my colour. Maybe into more like raspberry pink. This is probably a bit too pale for me, I think. Really trying with the colour choices this year. Um, but I also like a navy one. I think a navy one would look really, really lovely. Yeah. I'm excited for this. I'm, that's, I'm really, I have this often that I'm not, like I, I like it and then I show it up on, I hold it up on the podcast and I'm like, oh! <laughs> and that's how I feel with this one. So that is nice. Okay, two more. Uh, yeah, let's start with this one. So, um, I, when I finished this, I kind of like ran out of my, um, just a sec, right. Um, when I had this one, I ran out of, Okay, so when I finished this, I like ran out of stock and out projects. And I finished this, I think, last Saturday, uh, watching the rugby, the um, Scotland France game. I'm, I'm, I'm sad about it, let's not talk about it. Um, but we went to the cinema that night to see Zone of Interest, which I also didn't love. Um, and I always knit in the cinema. And I'd finished my stock and out project because in my head, I, was, I had a second sleeve to the sweater. I just finished it during the day and suddenly thought, oh, I have no knitting to take to the cinema. So I had a bit of a panic cast on. Um, I, because we're going away for a while, I like scheduled out my cast, like my kind of schedule. It's very bare bones, but it's like, finish body by this date, or like cast this on now, um, to try and just stay on top of everything before we go away. And I, I've mentioned already that I have a plan for the Tolsta, I brought the Tolsta t-shirt pattern out last year, and I'm gonna have a Tolsta tank top coming out this year which is a very, very versatile tank, so like summer tank top pattern. Um, and my plan was not to cast that on until end of Feb, but then I ended up with, it's bottom up, and I knew that I had, um, I just had to cast on a knit, and I knew the gauge because I've used this yarn before. So I cast on a Tolsta tank top in February, which feels ridiculous. I am using Drops Bell in this beautiful petrol blue colour. I like it a lot. It's a proper dual tone. It's it's really lovely. Very, very rich. Um, and I've done quite a lot of knitting. <laughs> um, it looks pretty, like, yeah. And we're, it looks kind of jumped up because it's on the needles, but um, I only have, like, maybe, like, less, fewer than five more centimetres to go before I start the shaping. And this one, I'm going to do the halter, which is when it kind of comes up here and then it's gonna square at the top and then it's got ribbing details at the front and back. And that is the plan with this one. Um, I was kind of on the fence about which sample to make because there's a, I've mentioned this already, but there's like that one, the halter kind of style. There's a tank top, I don't even know what the, like a vest style where it's high necked and it has like properly thick, like, shoulders, it has like proper shoulders rather than straps and there's a camisole version and I don't wear a whole lot of camisoles so I need to work out like what, maybe a white or like a black, like a real basic that I will wear a lot of um, but I keep wanting to make the, the vest version because I just love it, the high neck vest, I just love how it looks so I told myself I have to not make that one, I'll make the halter. So we're really really flying on this and um, like I said I think it's only do you know what I did? I made no notes last year. I made three samples, three and a half samples. There's one still in my needles and not a single note, which I'm kind of annoyed at myself for. <laughs> um, but I'm pretty like I'm pretty comfortable with the reverse engineering of it. And like I say, I have those samples so I can just look back and like count stitches. Um, but yeah, this is absolutely flying. I cast on on Saturday. It is by no means my primary knitting project. Um, funny, I cast it on and I knit maybe like two rows before we went into the cinema and then I got into the cinema, kept knitting a bit and realised that I twisted my ribbing and unravelled in the cinema and recast on in the cinema, joined the rounds and knit my ribbing and then changed needles and went up a size and I was just like, this is the most like badass knitting I've done in the cinema. It was so like unravelling the whole thing. It's quite a bright movie so I could definitely see. Um, but I just had, uh, they're actually in my pocket because I need to take them and put them in my bag. Weird. I just carry um, like a 
what are these called, light well markers. And I just had them out on the arm of the chair. And for every, I'd cast on 20 and then put on a marker and cast on 20, put on a marker. And that is the reason that I could do it in the dark. But yeah, so we're, as I say, we're flying on this one. Um, the other reason I got so far on this is because I was called up for jury service this week, which was on Wednesday. I knew it was coming. My summons came in like December. So I knew it was here and I knew it was, the way it generally works is that you get your summons and then you go into a ballot and then you only find out the day before the trial whether or not you're selected or not. So they called me on Tuesday and they said that I'd been selected, which is quite exciting because I was looking forward to it. Um, so Wednesday morning, get myself up, get myself ready, off we go. I took this project and another project, my next one, and the other one they told me my needles were too sharp and I got taken off of me security at the court. So I only had this one because it had like thicker needles and they're wooden. And then I had like an hour and a half of uninterrupted knitting time on this, waiting around. Of course, I got there 15 minutes early. They take an hour before they're like ready for you. And um, so I sat there knitting, read my book in the little waiting room. And then they take us into the court and the prosecutor is someone that I went to university with, uh, which is really weird. I mean, I studied law, so it's not that weird. And I studied law at Edinburgh, so it's really not that weird. But I rarely see people I went to uni with. I think a lot of us did an undergrad in law and then didn't go on to be lawyers. Um, but it was so strange to see someone like we're the same age, we study, I, I, like I know of her and pretty relatively similar, like we were quite similar academically and stuff. So it was weird to see someone who had taken the path and kind of like a weird, like that could have been me if I stuck with law. Not in like a, neither in like an aspirational, like not really, I don't really feel anything about it. I wasn't like disappointed, nor was I like, oh God, I wish I'd done that. Um, but it was just a really, really weird moment to see someone who I knew, and also like, I've not seen her for like, like eight years or something since I graduated, more than that. When did I graduate? I don't know, I graduated, yeah, eight years ago. And yeah, it was all just really weird. Um, but I got dismissed and I couldn't stay on the jury, which was sad because I was looking forward to it. Um, but I meant I got a lot of missing time on this. <laughs> so this is just, yeah, I, I'm in no big rush to get this done. Um, but it is good to know that, I mean, the Tulsa tea, I can knit a Tulsa tea in three days. Um, apparently, I mean, unsurprisingly, a tank top takes even less time. So that is fun. Uh, I shouldn't really be prioritising it because I have other things to be working on. But at the same time, it's super easy and fun and in the round knitting that I pick up, again, if I want to read it or something, I'm picking it up quite a lot. So that is my Tulsa tank top, halter edition. I need to come up with better names for them like vest, halter, camisole maybe, but it's not really a halter either. Like it comes up here and then there's like a line, but it doesn't mean it's halter. Like it's nothing's, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Okay, I have one final work in progress and I'm a little bit sad about this one. Since yesterday, only since yesterday. So I think I showed the yarn last time. This is, I have very little of it left here actually. Um, this is the mohair I have left. <laughs> so this is Knitting for Olive, um, Dusty Blue, I think it's called, in the merino and the mohair. So they are pretty much perfect colour match. This I ordered directly from Knitting for Olive and I am, I think I mentioned, yeah, I'm pretty sure I mentioned it last time, in Australia. We're doing two weeks in New Zealand and a week in Australia. The Australia part, my mum is getting married. I'm wearing a blue dress. I think I talked about this last time, but if not, here's the dress that I'm wearing. Um, also, let's admit, it's it's like mid-April in Australia, so me needing a mohair sweater is probably not actually what I'm going to need. However, it's very strappy, it's a afternoon to evening wedding, and I like the idea of having like another layer in case I don't know, we're inside for dinner, it's very, like I'm not, I don't, I don't wear a whole lot of strappy stuff, so I just feel like a bit of a comfort, comfort blanket bit of a part of the outfit thing. My sisters are also all wearing a lighter blue and I'm wearing a darker blue. I'm walking my mum down the aisle. So I'm kind of like, not really made of honour, but like kind of. Um, so I like the idea of like tying in their lighter blue with a, a wrap. So I'm knitting a wrap top basically. And I had a look at some patterns and I wasn't, like I'm just a bit fussy about this. I wear a, well, 
in the summer I have a lot of wrap dresses that I've sewn for myself and I've spent a lot of time getting the fit on that right. I'm not very busty, there's not a huge gap between my chest and my waist so like getting it right, not having a gape is a big thing. I have opinions on wraps basically and there were some out there that I... <clears throat> <clears throat> There were some out there that I really liked. Um, but I don't know why I'm so fussy. I just, I just am. Um, I didn't want a raglan. I, there were, uh, the gauge is like, my gauge is like 22 stitches. Um, I wanted to hit the waist and not be like a longer one. I wanted it to be fitted. So yeah, there were 101 things that I wanted that I just couldn't quite find. So I decided to work on my own. And honestly, I'm not mad about that. What I am mad about is the fact that I have now changed my mind about something and I'm quite far in and it's not far far, it's 15 centimetres, but it's 15 centimetres on 3.25 millimetre needles and 300 stitches, so uh, that's annoying. So I'm going to rip out, um, but I told myself, because I said, it's a bit of a funny week, just everything a bit funny, I told myself don't make a decision straight away, don't just like tear it apart, have a bit of time to stop and think about it. And also, um, I told myself I'd show on the podcast and then make a decision if, if I was going to rip out or not. I'm also considering knitting this top down instead of bottom up. Bottom up makes me comfortable, but I don't think knitters are always that comfortable with it. And I like the idea of whether or not I do turn this into a design, like keeping it in the back of my head. I can't help my brain from thinking, how would I write this up? And I think from a knitter's perspective, it would be nicer to have it bought top down. I think. I, this is my decreased edge though, and I'm, I am obsessed with this edge. It's so cute. Um, so yeah, it's got a tiny bit of ribbing. It's got a little flat edge, which you can't really tell, and then it starts decreasing. And my issue ultimately is that I decided I did not want to have the slit in the side. I was just going to tie the wraps and I've changed my mind. I want, uh, I want to be able to pass the slip through, like, you know, on a wrap, it's quite common to have like a, like a, slit or like a hole on the side seam and then that's where you pass the I'm just having to think I'm suddenly realizing I'm thinking seeing this outlines and I'm realizing that my wrap dress my wrap dresses that I really like don't have a slit on the side so maybe I don't want a slit on the side See, this is, this is good, this is why I didn't rip it out. The wrap dresses that I really like have an inside tie and an outside tie. And the outside tie comes from the side seam and the inside tie comes from the side seam on the inside. And I'm wondering if maybe I do that instead. I don't want any bulk, so I don't know how I would do it that wouldn't be too bulky. With, again, my, with my sewn ones, the outside ties are quite thick and the inside ties are very, very thin. And that's pretty common, right? If you... I'm thinking of like dressing gowns with an inside tie, it's a very thin one, so maybe an eye cord. Um, maybe I'll do that instead. Okay, I'm doing that. Oh, I'm excited. Yes, I like this idea. Okay. And I can just pick up, I can just pick up for an eye cord on the inside. I think. I think. Um, I already have the side seams marked because what I'm doing is, so it's decreasing, it's decreasing evenly like a V, um, but like I mentioned I've got a bit of a difference between my waist and my bust but not a huge difference but some people do have a huge difference. Um, so I actually got shaping which I never do. <laughs> like I am the easiest knitting, like nothing is shaped, nothing, it's easy to wear and it's not fussy. This is like the opposite, this is fussy. Um, oh I'm so sorry, I'm feeling so good that I just talk that through about the straps because that's going to be really cool. That is what I want. Yes. Um, yeah, because that'll be on the inside. And the other wrap comes over. Just to make sure it doesn't look like it's pulling. You don't want any like funny pulling, you know? No funny pulling. No funny pulling. Okay, I can work with this. Um, yeah, so... I've completely derailed myself <laughs> with my own brain. Um, but I'm so relieved that I don't have to rip out 15 centimetres and I'm relieved that I found a solution that I wanted because I didn't really want to do a slip, but I was like, oh, that's the only way that's gonna work. No, it's not. 
Um, so I, yeah, so I had some shaping. So ultimately I calculated the difference between my bust and my waist, worked out how many stitches difference that was and divided it by two so that I'm evenly increase, increasing to add shaping between my waist and my bust, which would be nice. And hopefully the, the V will stay the same, like this part will stay the same because it'll just accommodate for my bust as it goes up. So I'm excited. I'm also doing, oh yeah, the other thing I have to think about which I also have some ideas about is that um, because I'm doing the edging straight onto the onto the edge, the edging onto the edge, Rebecca, that's very eloquent. Uh, I'm doing the, it's not an applied edging, it is a continuous, I don't know what the word is, but instead of coming back at the end and like adding a border, I'm doing it as I go. Which means that at the back neck, I will be casting off stitches at the back neck and I will want the border to continue. So I need to work out what I'm doing there. If I'm being honest, I think my solution will be to cast off and then continue to knit my edge until the middle, do the other side as well, graft them together and then seam that down across the back neck. That's my plan. Um, oh, sorry, I'm so relieved. I was really sad I was going to put this all out. <laughs> and this has been my primary knitting this week. Like I've done a lot of this, all my reading, I've been working on this whilst I've been doing it. Um, and... Oh, it's going to be a, what's the word, set in sleeve, set in sleeve. I think it looks clean, it looks more like ready to wear I think that way and I think it will look very good with, like I think I say like with raglan sometimes there's some extra spacing here, with drop shoulders again it's quite boxy, so I really, I'm very excited. And then I considered a saddle shoulder but I don't really want a saddle either, I want it to be very simple and clean so I think a proper set in sleeves is going to be really nice and with a uh, stock of it like anything is possible there is no stitch pattern to worry about so I'm really looking forward to that so I'm good it's going to have long sleeves and um, like relatively fitted I think long sleeves Um, I guess I could do short sleeves and that is kind of the ace in my back pocket if I decide if I'm not getting through this fast enough the wedding is in less than two months and it is yeah a wrap. So the wrap obviously has more knitting than a regular cardigan and it's 3.25 millimetres so um, it's a lot of knitting. If I don't get there in time I might be doing short sleeves and then I can always come back and lengthen them after the wedding. I don't think I'm going to need a long sleeve cardigan. So oh I feel so good. Yes! Okay now I'm excited and now my plan was to take my toaster to my parents this weekend but I will instead take this and put some more yarn in the bag. <laughs> cool, so I think that is everything. In my head I've had yarn this week, but I don't think I have. Did I? Mentally running through what I've ordered. I don't think I've had anything new since I last spoke to, since I last filmed the podcast, which was, I guess, two weeks ago. Um, otherwise, life update, everything's going pretty well. It's yeah, a couple of funny weeks. We stayed up to watch the Super Bowl on Sunday, which was lovely, but what did finish at like 4.30am our time? So threw me off for a loop from the start of the week, which was a bit silly of me. Um, I'm glad we did it, but it, yeah, it definitely threw my sleeping pattern off for the week. And then this weird jury service thing was just like, yeah, just maybe stop and think about life a little bit. And then, I've, yeah. And then what was funny is I was looking at people that I went to school with, because, you know, of course, like that just triggered me being like, where's everyone, what are, what's everyone else doing? So I'm looking at people and then um, I find out a lot of people that I went to school with, well not like university or that I worked with straight out of university are really into being like business influencers and then they're posting, they're on Instagram, they're like founder slash podcaster and they're posting like, you know, they have like business podcasts where they like talk about marketing and I'm like, I am also a founder and a podcaster, except I sell knitting patterns and I talk about my knitting on YouTube. <laughs> so it was weird. I was like, I'm I'm really pleased. Like I'm in a really happy place, but it was just a weird moment to sort of stop and reflect. Um, and it, yeah, it was just weird, really weird. Um, but yeah, I'm good with that. Otherwise, I feel like a bit behind on everything. I've got a couple of test knits going right now. It's not that many, but managing the lauder, the cable knit test is quite a lot of work and um, much more than my usual mostly because there are so many testers it is a complex pattern and 
I split the test group into the v-neck, into the vest, and then there's one for the vest and one for the sweater and cardigan together. And keeping track of what's been called where is really hard, so I fixed something. And then someone's like, oh, where's this? Like, is this note updated? And I'm like, yeah, I've done that. And they're like, no, it's still there. And I'm like, oh, that was the cardigan, or like, that was the vest. So it's, um, yeah, it's, it's mostly fine. And if I'm honest, the, the major, like the only, there are two points of issue really. One is that the v-neck, joining the v-neck is tricky just because you, if you don't have bang on roll gauge, your v-neck is going to be a different depth and you have to do some adjustment to get the v-neck to the right place. And also with the v-neck, you're doing underarm shaping and v-neck shaping at the same time, which is just a lot to wrap your head around and it's all charted. So that just needs to be like, making sure that's really clean and like no confusion there is the first thing that's challenging. The second thing is that of course I couldn't be simple and there has to be cat sleeve cap shaping <laughs> in all over cable knit. So you're working short rows at the top of the sleeve in cable knit, which is actually really easy, but I could, again, it's like making sure that it's written down in a way that's clear enough that the words make sense to the knitters. So those are the two points that, um, or just that's the hardest part of pattern writing is when it's super clear in your head but putting the words on paper don't and that's hard and that that's why we that's why we do test it but um yeah it's made for that's quite a lot of work it feels like instead of just one test it it feels like three <laughs> um yeah so that's been a lot and what else work is pretty good gym is pretty good we're getting ready for going to New Zealand and Australia, which I'm so excited for. I've had a few emails and a few messages from people um, asking where I'm going and like offering trips and things and coming to see them and whatnot. We've only just finalised our agenda, so we now have it all booked. So my goal is to get back to everyone who's emailed me to work out if we're anywhere near places. But for the most part in Australia, we're just in Brisbane and on the Gold Coast. That's it. We're only there for five days. Well, I think we're there for just under a week, but two of those days of the wedding. So. We have very little time um, in Brisbane and in Australia in general, it's pretty short. We've got two weeks in New Zealand and um, Sam's parents are Kiwi, they live in New Zealand and so we're spending pretty much our whole time with them. Um, but we have some things I'm really excited about. We're doing a overnight cruise on Doubtful Sound, which is like down in Fjordland on the South Island. And we're like driving down the west coast of the South Island and yeah, we're doing the transalpine route and stuff like this. I'm so excited. So um, that's been a lot of work getting ready for that. And our little boat is out the water. Our, um, we, have a, we have a boat. We do not own our house. We do own a boat. Just, you know, priorities in order. <laughs> we have a 43-year-old sailing yacht called... Well, she's currently got a different name to the name we're naming her. But um, yeah, she's a Leisure 23. So she's a 23-foot sailing boat and we bought her back in October I think and she's now like lifted out the water and we have to do loads of jobs basically and then after we get back from Australia she's gonna go on a trolley and get driven to the other coast of Scotland and we're gonna put her back in the water on the west coast because the sailing on the west coast is beautiful and the east coast is a bit limited so um, we've got loads of jobs to do until that happens and the first one is an is anti-fouling the boat which is where you chip off all the paint the the, the the bottom of the boat is covered in a special paint that stops um like barnacles get, like feeding on it and like the more stuff on the keel the slower your boat goes so you have to keep the maintenance up to make sure your boat is like moving as well as it can through the water she's not a fast boat but that is also why it's important because if we're if she's slower than even that like we'll not get anywhere so you have to maintain the bottom of the boat and what usually happens is you lift it out, you take away any of the bad patches and you repaint it. Um, and the stuff that's there is like self eroding, um, but it's obviously not been done for a few years. So we need to chip off all the old paint and then we need to prime the whole boat and do the whole boat. Now it's only 23 foot, which is like just shy of seven meters. So it's not huge, but it's a lot of work. So our next couple of weekends, um, this weekend, next weekend, and the weekend after that, and like every weekend until we leave <laughs> is going to the boat, chipping off all the old paint and putting on the new paint. So I've got some super sexy coveralls to do that with. Um, and yeah, that's basically our weekends from, from here out. And I think that's everything. I've been reading a lot. Nothing I particularly recommend. I 
Oh, I read the new Ali Hazelwood romance book, uh, Bride. I did not think it was very good. <laughs> didn't really enjoy it. It was okay, wasn't great. Um, and I quite like Ali Hazelwood, but this, was, this didn't do it for me. And I am struggling my way through Hoffas. What is Hoffas? House of Flame and Shadow, the third Crescent City book from Sarah J Maas. And oh, I'm just not loving it, but I will finish it, but I'm not racing through. I know that there are some like big spoilers and I just want to know to the extent I'm tempted to look them up, but I will not. I think, I think I'm like just shy of halfway. So we'll get, it's a big book. We'll get through it. Um, slowly but surely and otherwise lo watching a lot of rugby there's no rugby this weekend but um there is rugby back next weekend and Scotland are doing pretty well they had a very unlucky game against France um and there's cricket on um England are I don't support England for anything because I'm Scottish and a fundamental rule of being Scottish is you don't support England in sports unfortunately when it comes to cricket <laughs> I do support England um, which is like the most English thing to support them. I don't know. Anyway, um, but they're currently playing in India. So we're watching that. It's, uh, what's, it's like five and a half hours ahead of us. So we've only got like a couple of hours in the morning. We'll have coffee and then I'll usually get like my morning meeting, my morning emails and stuff cleared out and watch the last like hour of the cricket. So that's been really nice. And it was Valentine's Day too. So lots of nice things happening. Bit of a chaos couple of weeks, but... Um, starting to feel like I'm getting back on top of things, looking forward to getting more done this weekend. And yeah, oh, I'm feeling so relieved now that I finished this. Yesterday, I decided I hated this. I really hated everything. You know those days you're just like, I hate, this doesn't work and this doesn't work and this doesn't work and I hate it all. So I'm glad that I didn't rip it out in spite because actually, I think it's gonna be pretty nice. And worst case, if I decide I hate it, I'm not gonna decide I hate it, I'm gonna love it, it's fine. <laughs> I was gonna say, like, if I decide I don't want to do that, I could always seam the other wrap into the side seam. And then you just pull it on and tie the side. Like, it doesn't have to be an actual wrap. I could just full, like, seam it up. So, options, options, people. I think that's everything for me. Um, I feel like I really have something in my head I thought I should say, but I've no idea what it is. So, it can't be that important. Um, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I'll be back in a couple of weeks with a podcast episode, and I will have either. I think next week I'll have an episode about my what I knit in a week as a network designer. What I knit, what I design, a week in the life. I don't know what it's called, but I vlogged for a week as a network designer and I think I'll have that video next week. Thanks for spending some time with me. I hope you enjoyed.